The mortgage market and the property market has changed a lot in the last six months or so. So there's lots of new things to consider, lots of things you need to know about. So today's video is all about those changes and what you need to know. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, I'm an expert mortgage broker. Today we're talking about what's new for 2023 in the housing market and the property market and with mortgages. So if you're a first time buyer, this information is gonna be relevant for you. If you're moving as well, and there's gonna be things that we're gonna talk about today uh, that you're gonna enjoy as well. Now, if you are a first time buyer, then you are absolutely going to want to check out my new book, The Ultimate Guide to Buying Your First Home. It is available right now, there's a link in the description description for a free ebook version so you can download the ebook uh, whenever you like download it straight to your laptop and you can uh, enjoy it at your leisure so there's a link in the description absolutely for free go and check that out hope you enjoy now as ever as well if you find today's video useful please do give us a thumbs up subscribe to the channel I try and do a new video for you every week on all sorts of different things uh, if you've got any questions or comments as well if you want me to do a video on a certain topic uh, please feel free to drop it in the comments and I'll try and do that for you over the next few weeks so let's get into the video then so we're talking about the the changes and what's new for the for the market the mortgage market the housing market this year and I think one of the biggest changes Changes is just kind of how busy the market is. So we, we're used to, in the last couple of years, things being absolutely crazy, you know, properties going for over the asking price, way over the asking price, bidding wars. Uh, you know, if you weren't really super quick getting your offer in and getting properties viewed, you know, they were going within minutes even sometimes, they were going you know, within the first few days, multiple people offering, uh, and it's been ab absolutely crazy. But that has certainly come calm down. Now, people were saying we're going to have a property crash. I don't think we are going to have a property crash. We're not having a property crash at the moment. You know, prices are uh, probably stagnant, stable. Uh, stagnant's not a very nice word, is it? But stable um, it, currently. So uh, we're not seeing that major dip down that, you know, some people thought we might. Um, house prices have dropped a little bit, you know, that's that's no secret. But we're, we're not preparing for a crash. I don't think anyone's expecting a major crash. Maybe just a levelling out this year. So prices aren't shooting up like they have been. But it has been a bit crazy. So a year of sort of levelling won't do us any harm at all. So whilst the market isn't as crazy, it is still quite buoyant. So we are finding that, you know, that there are there are sort of people struggling to find the property they want and, and, and being outbid, but it's not sort of, you know, crazy like, you know, outbid by £20,000 like it would have been uh, a year ago. Um, but so you do have to move quite quickly, but I would say the pressure is not quite as intense if you're looking for a property. I think what we're struggling with at the moment is, is available stock, you know, that confidence has been not a little bit with you know everything that happened in October last year with budgets and things uh, and interest rates going sky high for a little while um, interest rates are on their way back down they have been coming down the sort of plateaued a little bit now it's kind of end of March at the moment so the last few weeks interest rates have been sort of fairly steady not really coming down in fact one or two lenders going back up again but as I record this video there's some a uh, couple of lenders have said that they're going to pop their rates back down again in a few days time so I'd say steady on the interest rates um, but that's enough to restore some faith and hopefully over the next few months and you know into the later part of the year we're going to see uh, a little bit more faith a little bit more confidence restored in the property market people are going to um, want to be moving again you know those that are sort of waiting hopefully will will have the confidence not to wait any longer now let's talk about something else that hasn't particularly changed uh, and that is your deposit so I've been talking about five percent deposit for ages now you know five percent deposit has kind of been the minimum deposit for a long time and that's no different now you know even with everything um, you know being a bit crazy last year lenders were still doing five percent deposit they did sort of disappear for a, I don't know, a month or so, but yeah, we're, we're well back into 5% deposit now. So that's kind of where we need to be. So example there, you know, if your house is £200,000, you're going to need a £10,000 deposit. If your house is £500,000, then you're going to need a £25,000 deposit. So 5% deposit is fine. Um, now we need a little bit extra money for fees and costs. That hasn't changed really either. So uh, solicitors, you're going to need a solicitor. Uh, 
I would, if it's fairly kind of a normal purchase, so you know you haven't got sort of gifted deposits, help to well, you know, help, help to buy. I'll come to that in a minute, um, but no sort of complications really. Your solicitor's probably going to cost you about fifteen hundred pounds. Um, you need a few other bits and pieces, so your mortgage broker will probably charge you a little fee, uh, and there might be one or two other little bits and pieces. But around two thousand pounds should be enough for your fees and costs. Two to two and a half thousand pounds. That'd be plenty for all your fees and costs. You lender fees you can normally add on to the mortgage, valuations normally free. Um, stamp duty I'm going to talk about in a sec, but if you're a first time buyer, you're probably not going to pay any stamp duty or much stamp duty. So 5% uh, deposit plus a couple of grand, that's kind of where we need to be. So that hasn't changed, you know, that's been the same uh, for a good while now. So then let's talk about some things that have changed. So affordability, I think, is uh, one of the big ones. Um, a year ago, six months ago, you could probably borrow more than you can right now. And that's because with interest rates going up uh, and the cost of living going up and everything going up, lenders have had to change what we call their stress rates, their stress test. Um, and so that's the rate uh, or, the, or the, the, the test that a lender applies, you know, if, they, if you want to borrow uh, £200,000, let's say, the lender will look at your income and your outgoings and things and they will think, well, if the mortgage rate went up to X amount, they don't publish the figure, by the way, uh, if it went up to X amount, could they still afford this on their income? Uh, and that calculation now is what's changed. So that has got a little bit stricter. The rate they're using is higher. And that's because everything is just more expensive. You know, we, we don't have as much disposable income now as we did a year ago. And so the lenders have had to kind of respond to that and make sure that things remain affordable. So we've seen a drop in affordability. So you can't just assume that, yeah, we'll get four and three quarter times your, your salary now, particularly if you've got children or other debts and credit commitments and things that may well have dropped, uh, you know, quite noticeably. We have seen a few people that we kind of spoke to as they started their journey or started looking six months ago and now we've looked again and actually they can't quite borrow as much. Now if house prices do continue to just sort of stagnate or fall a little bit that might help uh, the, the stress test and the affordability uh, but at the moment it has just made it that little bit tougher to get the amount that you need. Another big change then for the better actually is stamp duty. So as a first time buyer uh, in the current climate, you know, the latest budget that the Chancellor did a few months ago after the disaster one in October. Um, so the stamp duty threshold now for first time buyers uh, is up to 425,000. So that means if you're a first time buyer and you're buying a property for less than 425,000 pounds, you won't pay any stamp duty at all. Now the threshold used to be less than that, it used to be 300, I think. Um, so that's uh, £125,000 extra threshold and that's about £6,000 odd, I haven't done the maths but off the top of my head that's about £6,000 odd um, of saving there versus a year ago. So actually if you're a first time buyer looking now that's quite a big uh, change, quite a big uh, you know benefit for your stamp duty. That could be extra deposit or it could be uh, it could mean that you could get on the property ladder sooner because you don't need as much money to one side. If you're buying a property for more than that uh, then uh, the, the, the next rate kicks in uh, at five percent. But for now, let's assume that as a first time buyer, most people aren't going to be paying any stamp duty. Another change we've seen this year is help to buy. Help to buy ended in, um, well, March, so about now. Um, closed for new applications a few months ago, so completion deadline is about now. It hasn't necessarily been replaced with anything kind of like for like. I'm, I'm sure it probably will be at some point. Uh, there are some other schemes and things. I'll do a whole video on those one day, uh, well, not one day, uh, in the next few weeks but um, yeah so help to buy hasn't been replaced so there isn't that scheme available at the moment uh, which you know it does make it a little bit trickier for people that want to buy a property um, it was av only available on new builds so that's you know um, not everyone is uh, up for a new build but it does still mean that you can buy a property with five percent deposit because 
you know you can buy a property on the open market with five percent deposit it means though that new builds aren't so accessible with five percent deposit so i'm sure another scheme of some sort will come into place uh, at some point in the future but i don't know any details about that okay so there's a fairly brief summary then of uh, what's changed and some things that haven't changed for this year some things to get you ready um, if you want to know a little bit more about your own situation how close you are to buying your first property or uh, you know your situation if you're moving um, feel free to get in touch with us go and check out our website there's a link in the description you can book a call straight in our diary as well if you like I'll pop a link to that in the description as well um, don't forget to go and check out uh, the the book the ultimate guide to buying your first home the link is in the description uh, go and download it for free go and enjoy it uh, and I will see you on the next video very soon take care